All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, we're Valence. Uh, my name is Mike Bonanno. Um, we play out of our apartment. We're from Westchester, and uh, we're fucking stoked to be playing on the 22nd. My name's Chris. I'm the drummer. My name's Ian Morris. I play bass. My name's Jeff Schaefer. I play guitar. Uh, let's see. As far as influences... Um, I, th I think we all have a lot of, we have all have very broad musical tastes, so there's definitely a lot of things in there. Uh, we're definitely all very influenced by, by metal, especially like more progressive uh, and technical metal, but at the same time we're also big fans of like jam rock, jam music, um, jazz, classical, he used to play in a hardcore band. Um, so, so we definitely bring a lot of different um, aspects to the table. I mean, for me right now, I'm really into Animals as Leaders, which is a big one, you know. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Evan Brewer without the faceless. Like his solo stuff is pretty cool. Um, but from where I come from, I listen to a lot of hardcore bands. Uh, Lygia, weird enough, and Misery Signals. I was really into Misery Signals. I don't know if you guys know them. Cool for me. <laughs> I don't know, I mean... I guess I listen to a lot of jazz music nowadays, but most of the time it's like old rock and I mean Mastodon I'm down with and um, yeah, I'm Rick McGee, big favorite. Michael, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> We're all basically into the prog thing, you know, experimental music, uh, jam, avant-garde. We listen to a lot of a wide variety of things like We'll be listening to like classical music in the tour bus, like when we're like trying to get like a peace of mind, you know, after a long day at work, just and like trying to get to a show on like a Friday. Like it's it's just it's just different. Like some days it's like let's get fucking get into it and listen to some fucking real heavy metal like like uh, Meshuggah, Periphery, and then Between the Bear to Me. Like we all love that kind of stuff. But I I like you said like I'm totally into the jam thing. I like Al Dimiola a lot. Like you know the classics. We're all very classic uh, classics. Uh, Influenced, yes, and Led Zeppelin, you know. So I could bring them back from the dead and we could play a show with them? Oh shit. Oh man. Uh, um, hmm. Super group? <laughs> Make up all the best musicians of. Uh, oh man. That, that's tough. Um, I would totally play with yes. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Um, you know, I grew up listening to those guys. My dad was a huge fan, a lot of family friends, and it's just a classic. And recently, you know, we're, you know, we're prog metal, so we want to jump into the whole thing with BT Bam and Periphery and stuff like that. That'd be pretty fucking awesome. You stole all mine. I stole all of Chris's. Anyone want, want to take the microphone? Yo, like King Crimson back in the early to mid 70s. Yeah, 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 right. De like when uh, when you had a Tony Levin on bass and a Bill Bruford on drums and Robert Fripp that. That incarnation. I think you actually pointed out that a riff I had wrote was the like exact same rhythm as something from Lark's Tongues and Aspic. I'm a, I'm a big King Crimson nerd. Oh, for me, Red Rocks. I just want to. I don't know. That's, I want to play there. I like it. the way it looks. I don't even care about how it sounds. To be honest, I think it's fantastic. But it's just mountains. The Greek theater. Oh man, I would play. Uh, yeah, the mountains sound like a great place to play. You know, the beach anywhere outside. I love playing outside. Yeah, no, we'll fucking play wherever. <laughs> you probably have to edit that out. The the Alamo. <laughs> I, I I mean I do, I would love to play in Europe. The the European festival scene. They have they have crazy music festivals. That would be incredible. We're going to be releasing um, an EP, Laser Baron. It's like 15, 16 minute, uh, three song suite. Um, and, um, yeah, I think, I, you know, we're working on artwork right now. So, you know, when, when that's done, we're looking at probably like six weeks around. Try and push it, get some press for it. and. Just try and get it out there as soon as possible. So we're looking at like early summer. <laughs> oh, 
before the four of us played, Valence played with various singers. And we're, you know, we're all thinking about, you know, bringing a singer into the project. But when we write like our instrumental things, it's like one of us will have a riff and we'll just kind of like work off that, and then we'll have another riff. And we'll just, we'll, the three of us will build off each other, and then he plays like an array of different things, and we're like, what feels good, what sounds good, what you think we could really like, just like really get a connection with other people too. You know, there's a lot of thought um, involved in our music and, you know, which we try and make it awesome. You know? I feel like it's a little bit easier, or like for us as, as players, because um, we're not trapped in this idea of like, oh, well, he's got to sing something hooky here. You know, the music will do that. And like, usually, depending on the feeling of how we want it to go, that's how it's going to go. You, know, you don't have somebody dictating what you think the music sounds like into their idea of it and putting it somewhere else altogether. You know what I mean? So it, it's, I don't know, it's freeing to actually not have to be locked down to that verse, chorus, verse, chorus thing. We can throw in odd meter timings and not, you know, oh, we don't have to worry about doing it. Now you got to stand there and be quiet. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, with with our music, I mean, when I think of, like, the latest incarnation of Valence, it really started with the writing of Sleepwalker, which, for us, we, it, it was uh, me, me, Mike, Chris, our all bases, uh, Peter a little bit, but, you know, we really kind of wrote it in like a in like a classical form, in like sonata allegro form. Mike, Mike, and I are both you know, focused on classical music, and even though you know it's it's metal and it's rock and it's you know prog and stuff, we wanted it to to have some cohesiveness to this really long piece, and doing that kind of helped. Uh, our new EP coming out, you know, late spring, early summer, Laser Baron was all from a story. Uh, this this kind of idea we came up with about this. Uh, this scientist who is kind of turned by money to build this to build this weapons technology, this laser that ends up ripping a hole through space and time and transporting him into this future where his you know, technology has ravaged the world. And so that story kind of provided the narrative context for the music and how we broke it down, um, which was a little bit different. And um, you know, is also a little bit different. You know, for an instrumental band, we don't have lyrics necessarily telling the story. We have the music telling the story in that sense. It's uh, it's varied. Up, I, I think most of the time we come up with, we'll come up with the with different riffs, um, melodies, different ideas, and maybe we'll have a couple that are grouped together. That we think these couple of riffs might work really well in a song together, but we don't necessarily have a, a structure for that. And we'll sort of bring that out to the group. We'll all start playing around with those riffs. And, um, after we've sort of kind of figured out how they're sounding, we'll start to figure out a structure for the song. Uh, at least that's how it's been most recently in our in our latest writing processes. Um, you know, we'll kind of I'll bring something to the group, and then we'll sit down and we'll say, okay, how are we now going to turn this into something big? And we'll start to, you know, Mike might come up with a riff, and then I'll come up with a variation of that riff, and we'll think, okay, how, well, how are we going to get, int- you know, introduce this new variation later on? Yeah, um, you know, just kind of it becomes a process. There's a lot of a lot of dry erase boards that we fill up <laughs> and you know re erase and write things, but. That's how it happens a lot. Big fan of the dry erase board. <laughs> they, like, they can't tell you how many times we edit a song, though. Like, you know, and it's not until it, like, feels right, you know? So it's like, we, with all these ideas, we keep pushing and pushing and pushing it. And eventually, we sometimes we'll come back and be like, wait, what actually felt right was what we did first. But, you know, it, there's a lot of things that we're doing um, while we're writing, and... It's really what just feels right in the end, you know? It's just, just like we're writing these new ideas for this new song right now, going beyond Laser Baron, and we've gone through like two dry race boards, trying to figure out how we want to do it, part for part, giving weird names to different phrases, like, trying to, you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's like creating a story. Uh, 
I, I think we almost always consider with Sleepwalker and with the newer stuff the live performance aspect of it, yeah, at least to some degree. Um, you know, there's there are little parts where we'll add a little a little something into the album that uh, you know a little extra rhythm guitar track when we're playing dual leads or uh, um, a little bit of uh, keyboard underlying some you know, open very open guitar chords, but. Nothing that, that we feel would take away a major aspect from it live. So we definitely consider that when we're writing the music. And with the music we write, I mean, a lot of the times it's going to be, it'll go from me and Mike playing completely different parts to even what Ian is playing. And uh, you know, other times it'll be completely unison. So we definitely try to really utilize the, the number of instruments we have in, in writing these you know, different melodies and counter melodies as we're doing it. I mean, as far as live performance is concerned, generally speaking with us, what you hear on a record, you should pretty much be able to hear that when you come see us live, you know? We don't do a lot of, you know, what Jeff's talking about was so minimal on the recording that it, unless you've heard it a billion times and really pay attention, when you come see us live, it's the same thing. You're gonna get that same, yeah, except for when we like, you know, we, we improv some, like, especially on Sleepwalker, it's so, you can pretty much do whatever you want there. But we're pretty straightforward. You know, the energy is good. The, the, live, the live stuff is awesome. It, it's, it's fun when everybody comes out. You know what I mean? When everybody's in there and it's going crazy, it's, it's where it's at. I like to improv improvise on stage. In Sleepwalker a lot. In Sleepwalker a lot. You know, just because, like, you know, when you get into it, it's nice. I just, like, I'm not playing melody, so as long as I'm hitting the downbeats, ah. Uh... <laughs> No, but I try, to, I try to like play the album as much as I can, but I have to have fun at the same time. You play pretty much my right notes most of the time. Yeah, I play, I play it. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time. You know, a few flubs here and there. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much the, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, all these guys, you know, very slight improv, but like it's just a different experience on stage playing than how we approached it when we were actually recording. So. When 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 we're live, when we're playing live, like there's just like way more energy like involved. Like when we were way more precise and wanted to focus it, like for an album experience. When you come to our show, you're really getting a lot more energy, a lot more fucking. There you go, another f bomb. Sorry guys, uh, you'll get a lot more. You know, like it's just like completely different experience. <laughs> Breakfast here. Cookie crisp. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love those cookies, bro. <laughs> really? <laughs> Cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, dude, you stole mine. Oh, I'm gonna go with um, rice krispie treats. Cause I mean, it's all like. Hey, I don't care if it still exists. It's awesome. Rice krispie treat cereal. Because you have a box around the cereal looking thing. <laughs> oh no. Kicks. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> I feel like we ended up just saying what our favorite cereals were, except for maybe Chris. But, uh. <laughs> to the chef on the cover of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's true. And I, and I can see you being like, Cookie Crisp. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess it, if I had to be honest, then I'd have to say like Count Chocula or something. You know, I was born on Friday the 13th, so I guess I'm, I'm like, you know. Yeah, you know. Okay. In that case, then Captain Crunch. Is, all I'd have to do is shave a little bit of my mustache, and I'm right there, you know? <laughs> Cereal's a great topic. I'm glad you guys asked us. <laughs> Very passionate about cereal. <laughs> Almost as much as music. Um, once again, we're really excited to play uh, the show um, on the 22nd. Um, yeah, the Music Fest is going to be a great time. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, we got a bunch of... Yeah, and then we're going to be playing at Garcia's, um, opening for Consider to the Source on April 24th. That's the next big local show. And, um, you know, we, we, we just got a van, so we're trying to play more and more outside of the, the area. 
His name is Rufus. Uh, we're going to be driving him up to Vermont for a couple shows in April, uh, trying to work our way down to DC. We got Philly coming up. Um, yeah, just. Yeah, look for us online. Check us out at valence-band.com. Um, you can check our music out on Bandcamp, Facebook. You can, we're all over the place. So, yeah, Google us. Thank you uh, for having us.